Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Export Market Development Grants Program Information Session for T1 applicants. My name is Nana Gurnich, and I'm Assistant General Manager at Austrade, looking after the implementation and delivery of the EMVG program. With me today is Melissa Sikreski, who is Assistant Design Manager and who will be delivering uh, this webinar with me today, taking you through the online application form on the EMVG online portal. We come to you from the Gadigal land of the Aura Nation here in Sydney, and we do uh, respectively acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet today and pay our respect to the elders past and present. We recognise the enduring connection that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have with this land, and we extend our respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, acknowledging their rich histories, cultures and contributions. Just a bit of housekeeping before we begin. Uh, your microphone and camera have been turned off uh, because you're not presenting. Um, and uh, we are using Slido a bit later today after our presentations uh, for any questions that you may have with the hashtag EMDG. So I would like to ask you to uh, listen to the content first because we may be uh, covering uh, your questions within the presentation and the Slido will open towards the end of this session. Today, I will cover a few points in this webinar, mostly focusing on the online application form, but we'll do a quick recap on the eligibility requirements for T1 applicants, including the grant amount and the opening date. We'll take you through the key steps and how to prepare to apply, and we'll have a video demonstration of the online portal. We'll then give you some um, system tips and requirements, and also talk about the mandatory attachments of the application form. And as I said, we'll have uh, some time set aside for questions and answers at the end. So as you probably all know, we have released the grant guidelines for the next round of the program, round four. Uh, that happened on the 13th of August. So we released the guidelines three months ahead of opening the online portal to applications to give you time to prepare uh, all the information and get your answers ready. Since the launch of the grant guidelines, we delivered four public webinars and the recordings of those are on our website. We have responded to high volume of inquiries coming to the EMDG help desk and I'm hoping that you have received uh, answers if you ask the questions, but we continue to do so over the next few weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. So we also encourage you to read the grant guidelines on the website. Uh, we have published a number of exemplars of the plan to markets, for example, sample application forms for each tier, uh, recordings of the previous webinars, and a number of explainer videos that will take you through the eligibility requirements, what you need to have to get ready to apply, and, um, and information around how to uh, complete your information online using that sample application form as reference prepare the answers so you can actually cut and paste them later when the online application form opens. Please also subscribe to the EMDG update newsletter. That is the main channel that we use to communicate uh, uh, all information about the EMDG program. Uh, so please subscribe. We've got about 20,000 subscribers already, and that is our main channel to communicate to you. Please also check our up, uh, website regularly for all updates, and that is very important to do once we open the online portal to applications, because the regular updates will be occurring on the EMDG online portal, but also on our website. And if you have any other questions, please write to us at the EMDG help desk. So as I said, we'll do a bit of a recap for uh, what, what are the eligibility criteria for T1 applicants. The reason why we're doing this briefly is because we already have uh, run, webinars, um, uh, run webinars on all eligibility requirements for each tier that are published on our website. But just to recap, the T1 uh, category where you can apply for applications is for uh, Australian small to medium enterprises below 20 million turnover that have never exported before. So if you already applied an EMDG in the past, you have started exporting, you got export sales, even if they're minimal, you cannot apply in this day. So that's important to remember. Um, so you cannot be exporting before or receiving EMDG in the past to come back. So 
that is, uh, please note that. And also you must be ready to export. And that's another key requirement for uh, T1 applicants. And we'll take you through uh, that requirement uh, shortly. So export readiness is something that you must demonstrate to Austrade. And there are two tests that you need to pass, one or, or the other. The brand size in this fee is between minimum 20,000 to maximum 30,000 per financial year. So round four will open for um, your export promotion eligible expenditure that you will incur in 25, 26 and 26, 27. So for those two years, you can apply up to 30,000 in those uh, in each of those financial years. We estimate to offer about 500 grants in this tier, and that estimates it estimates is based on if everyone in this tier applies for that maximum of 30,000 per year, that is how many grants we can offer. Of course, if businesses apply for less, uh, maybe 20,000, 25, then we may be able to offer more grants in this tier. The way how we will be allocating grants is based on your grant amount requested in your application form. We'll receive applications and allocate grants in the order they're received and assessed. So that is important also to note. It's no longer as we had previously in EMDG where we have a round open for a certain period of time and then we receive applications and distribute funds across uh, all eligible applicants. That is no longer the case will be opening and closing once the funding is fully allocated in that order of receipt of applications. Key date to remember is the 12th of November, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. That's when we will open applications to your T1. Export readiness. As I said, this is an important requirement for T1 applicants to meet. Austrade has developed an export training course, an export readiness test, apologies, export readiness test that is available on the Glogable Toolkit and also to the EMDG online portal. So you can log in into the EMDG online portal directly, or if you come through the Glogable Toolkit, the link will guide you to the EMDG online portal to complete that export readiness test. It is a test that's got 10 simple modules takes about 30 minutes for you to go through and complete and the, at the end of that you need to uh, also pass a test um, that those 10 informative modules will take you to, to that exporting um, information that you must uh, um, consider when you are preparing to, to start uh, your exporting journey. It's important that the business, the applicant business or the primary contact of that business completes this test not your grant agent or not someone uh, that is outside of your business. It must be the business itself who is applying for this grant to complete a test. At the end of that test, you will receive a certificate. Our system will remember your ABN and that you have completed a test and we will then um, cross-check it when you apply in the application form, that reference number will appear. So you don't need to do anything because our system will remember that. You also have a choice to uh, complete one of the export training courses that are published on the Go Global Toolkit. These courses have been recognized by Austrade as recognized training courses or export readiness training courses that businesses can complete, receive a certificate from the th third party provider, and then upload that evidence of your export readiness with your application. So important to remember that you must do either of those um, and be ready to do that by, by the time we open T1 on the 12th of November. So, uh, there is uh, just the next slide, I guess, that will I just recap <coughs> what's important, uh, which I probably already talked about. But again, this is the date, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Day Daylight Saving Time on the 12th of November, T1. Uh, will open to applications on the EMDG online portal. As I explained, applications will be received, we will assess them in the order they're received, we'll allocate grants and close that to you once that's, uh, that funding is fully allocated. Even if you submit your application before we close the online portal, um, that is not a guarantee that you will be offered a grant given that we are receiving uh, more applications or getting applications that come in more than there is funding. <clears throat> in case there are some applications that are not eligible or the grant offers are not accepted, so we can actually offer that grant to someone else on that queue or on that list. 
funding is limited and some applicants may miss out. I will now hand over to Melissa to take us through the EMDG online portal. Thank you, Noma. We'll now showcase a video highlighting how to submit your online application form via the EMDG online portal. The video is a general overview of the form design and how to complete it. It does not go into detail or answering each individual question relevant to the tier you're applying because every business will respond to each question differently due to the nature of their business operations or activities. The form is simple and intuitive. If you have prepared your answers and have your mandatory documents ready for upload, it should only take you about 30 to 45 minutes to complete it. Before we hit play, please ensure your volume is up. If you have any technical issues in viewing the video from your end of the webinar, we will provide you the YouTube clip, uh, link sorry, in the WebEx chat and you can access it from your own device. Lastly, a video disclaimer. In the video, you will see the online application form from our test environment. This may slightly be different to the actual application once it goes live, as there may be some tweaks to the language. This video will demonstrate the EMDG online application form process. Before you start your application form in the portal, you will need to read the Round 4 EMDG grant guidelines, download and familiarise yourself with the sample application form from our website, perhaps even pre-fill your responses in the sample application form where possible so that you can copy and paste them into the online form when it opens. Set up your digital identity and check if you can log into the portal. Prepare the supporting documents that are relevant to the tier you're applying for and watch the Get Ready to Apply for EMDG videos available from our website. All businesses and organisations must submit their EMDG application form through the EMDG online portal. The EMDG online portal login page is where you access the application form, see regular updates on the current and previous rounds, and host technical specifications and other relevant information. To access the application form, you need to log into the EMDG online portal by scrolling down to the middle of the page and logging in with your government digital ID. Your digital ID must be connected to the business's ABM that you will be applying for a grant. You can do that through the government's relationship management system, also known as RAN. If you do not have a digital ID, you will not be able to apply. So to get your ID, visit the homepage of the EMDG portal and follow the links to the ATO's registration page. Getting your ID can take some time though. So our advice is to set up your digital ID well in advance of the round opening. To log in, enter your MyGov ID email address, then select Get Code. A four digit code will appear on the login screen. Log into your MyGov ID on your mobile device using your 10 character password fingerprint or face recognition. Enter or accept the four digital code in your MyGov ID app to continue. The EMDG online portal homepage is where you can access Austrade's export readiness test, start your new application form, access prior grant applications, grant agreements and milestone reports. Check the status of your current application, as well as where you'll be able to access your grant agreement and lodge your milestone reports when they become available. The application form is divided into five tabs. Each tab must be completed before moving on to the next one. You do this by clicking on Save and Next at the bottom of each page. 
We recommend that you save often so that your work is never lost. You can do this by clicking on save here. You can also save and exit to, if you want to come back to it later. However, this does not hold your place in the queue. Only submitted applications will be assessed in the order that they are received. Questions that are mandatory have an asterisk. Validations and error messages will appear if questions are not completed correctly or you do not meet any eligibility requirement. Recheck your responses to ensure your application is complete and correct. You can also see which documents you need to upload. You can upload at each tab or you can wait until the end of the form. The choice is yours. Helpful information and guidance is available throughout the form in purple boxes. The eligible applicant tab is the first section of the application form. To start the application, you must read and accept the terms and conditions of use and confidentiality and privacy provisions. Simply click on the hyperlinks to access the information. The tab is divided into three sections, tier selection and eligibility, applicant business details, applicant business structure. The tier selection and eligibility section of the table is where you select which tier you're applying for and answer other key eligibility questions up front. The form has been designed to validate if you are eligible to receive a grant under the tier you have selected. It checks your prior grant history to see if you have applied for EMDG before. It also has validations in place for other questions. As a tier one applicant, you must select up to 10 markets you intend to promote your eligible products. State your annual turnover and provide us with two years of profit and loss statements and balance sheets. Tell us if you have the minimum capacity to spend up to $20,000 per financial year of your own funds. The applicant business detail section has certain fields that are pre-filled from the ABR and ASIC websites. For example, the date of your business commencement. It is in this section that you will declare if you are tax compliant and be prompted to provide us with evidence to support your declaration. The applicant business structure section is where you provide us with the details of any related companies, name of all company directors and partners, and if you are a First Nations organisation. The eligible tier tab has been designed to ask you questions that are specific to the tier you have selected. It is within this tab that you'll answer a series of questions that will determine if you're eligible for the tier and be prompted to upload supporting documents to prove your eligibility. As a tier one applicant, you must demonstrate that you have not previously exported and that you have the appropriate skills to market your eligible products overseas. To demonstrate that you have the appropriate skills you must successfully complete a recognised export readiness training course from a recognised provider listed on the Austrade Go Global Toolkit website and or the export readiness test available on the EMDG online portal. You must upload evidence to support the completion of your training and provide the date of completion. If you have completed the Austrade Export Readiness Test on the portal, your completion will be registered automatically in the online application form. You will also need to explain how you have a designated connection to your eligible products. Remember to review your responses before you click on Save and Next. 
the Plan to Market and Eligible Expenses tab requires attention to detail. This tab is divided into three sections, Plan to Market, Eligible Expenses, Optional Questions. The Plan to Market section is where you must provide unique, high quality and specific responses to your business. All questions are mandatory. They must be completed with sufficient detail and must directly relate to your planned export promotional activities. You cannot submit plan to market responses that are copied from another business or submit generic marketing plan responses. If you do, your application will be deemed ineligible. Your responses in the plan to market section can be up to 3000 characters in length or approximately 500 words. If you have pre-prepared your response, you can copy and paste your response in the text box. The planned eligible expenditure table is a mandatory section that must be completed. To do this, select the category or categories that you plan to spend the grant money on and fill in the respective amounts. The total planned eligible expenditure will be automatically calculated in the table as the sum of the amounts you entered for each planned eligible expenditure category. It cannot be more than double the maximum grant amount, that is $60,000 for the tier, and cannot be less than $40,000 per financial year. The total grant amount sought is an amount that you enter. You tell us how much you want to receive each financial year. The total grant amount sought per financial year is to be calculated as 50% of your planned eligible expenditure up to the maximum grant amount per tier, that is $30,000 and it cannot be less than $20,000 per financial year. You can only receive a grant for eligible expenditure and you must match the total grant amount sought with your own funds. You must provide a copy of your current bank statement and bank account transactions with your application to demonstrate that you have at least $20,000 per financial year of your own funds to match the minimum grant of $20,000 per financial year. Please double check your total grant amount sought and ensure that you can match the grant with your own funds. The table has system validations and error messages will come up if you enter amounts greater than the amounts allowed. You must declare that you have the minimum $20,000 per financial year to match the minimum grant amount of $20,000. You can match the total grant amount sought with your own funds. You understand that if you spend less than $20,000, you will not receive a grant payment and you will not spend the grant funding on ineligible expenses. The last section of this tab is the optional questions. Your responses to the following questions are optional. Answering these questions will help Austrade understand your business's overall export readiness as outlined in Austrade's Go Global Toolkit and potentially offer other trade services. Remember to review your answers before you click on Save and Next. To be eligible for a grant, you must have an eligible product. It is in this tab that you select and identify the eligible product you are seeking to export or promote to overseas buyers. You can select multiple categories of eligible products. You'll be asked to provide a comprehensive description, remembering you can copy and paste your pre-prepared response. 
followed by answering a series of questions relevant to your product. If you're promoting goods made outside of Australia or services other than tourism services, you'll be required to upload the respective submissions. Templates for these submissions can be found on our website and it is strongly recommended that you prepare and complete these prior to the round opening. The application finalisation tab is the final section of the application form. It is in this tab that you provide all supporting documentation if you haven't done so in previous tabs. The bank account details of your business or organisation so we know where to pay your grant. The details of the primary contact person. This person will be responsible for accepting the grant agreement. Your website details or social media channel link. And a declaration that you must read, acknowledge, understand and accept by entering your details. Lastly, you'll be asked to acknowledge that Austrade does not accept incomplete applications and that you have re reviewed your application for completeness. To review your application, simply go back to the first tab and check each of your responses and click Save and Next at the end of each page until you get back to this tab where you can click on the Submit button. Upon clicking on the Submit button, you'll be directed to the Application Confirmation page. This will confirm that your application has been successfully submitted and you can download a copy of your application form as a PDF from here. Be sure to check your inbox and spam folder for an email that provides you with details on your successful application submission. If you do not receive an email within two hours of submitting your application, please contact EMDG Help immediately. Should you require any technical assistance whilst completing the application, please contact EMDG Help on 132878 or email us at emdg.help at austrade.gov.au. That brings us to the end of the video. Thank you, Mel. Uh, also, just a reminder, this video has been um, published on YouTube channels for Australia's YouTube channel and also shared via our WebEx chat with you all. So thank you, Mel. This was quite comprehensive um, run through the or navigation of the application form. Obviously, we haven't gone through every single question, but uh, it will does give you an overview of each section and all the mandatory attachments, which we will recap now. Mel, if you can take us through, I've heard about six or seven mandatory attachments there to our, to our other form. Let's recap and also provide some guidance on the size of those uh, documents and how many per mandatory attachment. Not a problem. Um, as per the grant guidelines, um, 6.4.1 attachments for T1 and the sample application form, there are seven areas that stipulate attachments are required. We'll address these seven documents that are required, um, noting that the plan to market is no longer a separate attachment and as per the example document on our website, the content is to be added into the individual section within the application form now. To ensure you have the correct number of documents, we will take you through the requirements for each eligibility criterion and the number of documents that are required for upload. So you can see here, um, We've got the mandatory attachments for all T1 applicants. You requ are required to provide us with two years of financial statements. Okay, so that's your profit and loss statement and your balance sheets for the last two financial years. You need two profit and loss statements, two balance sheet statements, uh, sorry, balance sheets, um, and one for each financial year. 
You also need to provide us evidence for the minimum capacity to spend per financial year. And this is your bank statement, as well as a transaction um, history from your bank. Okay, once again, two documents that need to be uploaded to demonstrate that you've got the minimum capacity to spend up to $20,000. We also require you to upload evidence in regards to your tax compliance. Okay, this evidence is your um, things like your business activity statement, notice of assessment, or your statement of account, and this must be for your last two financial years as well. Again, it's two documents that you must upload, one for each financial year. Tier one applicants must also provide evidence for export readiness. If you have this. Um, completed the Austrade test through our online portal or access through our Go Global Toolkit, this information will be pre-populated on the application form itself. However, if you have not completed the Austrade export readiness test and you have done a um, or completed a training course from one of our providers as recognised on the Go Global Toolkit, you need to upload a course um, certificate or email or badge of some kind with your application form itself and provide us with a date of completion. So remembering, if you have completed the Austrade Export Readiness <coughs> Test through our online portal, nothing needs to be provided. However, if you've done a training course from an external provider, you need to provide a certificate, and this is a document that needs to be uploaded. The other mandatory um, attachments that you would need to upload um, as part of your application form depend on your type of product that you're promoting and the entity type that you are. So if you are a company that is promoting goods made outside of Australia or services um, other than tourism services, there are specific submissions that you need to provide um, and these can be actually located on our Austrade website in the How to Apply section and templates are available for these two um, requirements. There are doc one document per requirement Okay, and you need to upload um, that as well as part of the application. The last one is your trust deed. Um, so if you are a trust applying on behalf of your trustee, you need to actually um, provide us with your trust deed and any amendments to that, and that's one document as well. I'll just quickly run through the system requirements as well um, to make your application process easier. We encourage that you prepare your mandatory documents to prove your eligibility in advance of submitting your application. We will provide you with these documents near the end of the webinar. I'm oh, sorry, it's a, we just provided you with those documents just at um, the previous slide. The documents will vary by tier and include things like bank statements, balance sheets, business activity statements and so forth, as previously mentioned. You'll need to attach these documents to your online application form, okay? when we ask for that document. The documents must be a single file. Our advice is to scan or join those documents into a single PDF document. Therefore, all documents must be uploaded as a PDF. We will not accept screenshots and the file size must be below 10 megabytes. It's also important that you have a stable internet connection. So make sure you have Wi-Fi or a high quality data connection when completing your application online to avoid any disruptions. We also recommend that you use a desktop computer, not a mobile device, and your internet browser, such as Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, are up to date. The minimum screen resolution that we also recommend is that it's 1,280 by 800, just so your form is accessible and easy to um, navigate through. You'll see here also um, on the screen and also demonstrated on the video that the online portal will have um, a table. This will be updated throughout the day. The table will highlight the percentage of funds that have been allocated by T and provide a status update. Once funding has been exhausted for the particular T, the portal will close and this will also be shown on the table. Thank you, Mel.
So this brings us to the, to the section on questions and answers. And I have seen a few questions coming to, uh, through um, Sli uh, Webex, actually, not Slido. Uh, we'll open uh, for questions to Slido very shortly, and I can address some of those that came through Webex. But also, um, just to recap on some of the frequently asked questions that we have been getting through the inquiry line uh, around the system or around the, the load on the system and our testing that's happening, um, the, the size of attachments, the, the bank statements, uh, because uh, you, some of you have been uh, verifying those uh, through the EMBG inquiry line. So just uh, in line with system, I guess, requirements, uh, bank statements, someone was asking earlier, how do I demonstrate my transaction history if I'm applying in November? So we do recognise that various banks in Australia provide different uh, bank statements throughout the year, whether quarterly, six monthly or monthly. Um, what we're asking you is to provide an a copy of your official bank statement for the 24 uh, uh, calendar year. So that could be from July, August, September, June, whenever you received it. But also, before you apply in November, provide us with a copy of the transaction history uh, that is dated November. So there are two mandatory documents that must be clearly labelled and uploaded with your um, application form. And that is to demonstrate at the time of applying that you have minimum capacity to spend. Some of you have been asking, but the, the funding will flow from July 25. Why are you ch uh, checking now? This is to demonstrate at the time of applying. We can also ask you later before, if you're successful, before uh, we make a payment. We will also ask you for uh, that evidence with your master report for the following year if you are receiving a grant agreement for up to two years. So Australia can do that, but just at a time of applying, we're asking you for this one um, piece of evidence with your application. <laughs> Um, questions around tax compliance as well have been frequently asked. Um, this is something that obviously uh, is in the ATO Australian Taxation Office remit. Uh, Austria does not provide advice on tax compliance. All Australian businesses uh, that are applying for grant programs, as you know, must be tax compliant and EMDG requires you to be the same. This is also outlined in the EMDG rules and the guidelines. So um, what Austrade can ask you to provide with your application has been also outlined in the guidelines. It's for your previous two income years. Uh, preceding your application and also that you are currently tax compliant. So with your application, we're asking you to provide tax compliance for 22-23 and 23-24 financial year. Some of you are asking us, um, I haven't lodged, yet, lodged my tax return yet for 23-24, given that I can do it later. Please submit your best, your most recent best statement for 23-24 with your application. You can also provide us with your notice of assessment or your statement of account. So please um, refer to ATO's guidance on what it means to be tax compliant in Australia. And this is what you need to demonstrate with your EMDG um, application for round four. Um, my Gov ID was one, um, another question. People are asking us, um, how do I set up my Gov ID? Again, that is ATO's uh, platform. Uh, so all inquiries should be directed to ATO. By now, you should have set up your my Gov ID. And uh, Melissa um, has noted as well that my Gov ID is changing a name soon to my ID. Probably all of you have already received notification from ATO that that is happening. Um, it's a branding change and a name change, and um, ATO has asked us not to uh, obviously um, provide advice on that, given that they are owning that platform and that product. So please refer any questions around MyGovID, how you set it up to the ATO. But you cannot apply an EMDG if you don't have it set it up. So please, if you haven't done so, now is the time to do that before the 12th of November. And just one thing that um, I can just highlight is that you can actually jump onto the online portal now and check your access to see if you can actually log into the online portal by simply entering your MyGov ID email address that you have um, and following the prompts on the screen. Um, and it's a fairly straightforward process. If you can't log in for whatever reason, um, you know, as we said, please contact the ATO to make sure that your MyGov ID has been um, put together correctly and so forth. And then if you need any further assistance, um, the EMDG help desk can also assist in some of those inquiries as well. Mm. 
Thank you, Mel. Uh, there is a question. Again, this webinar is all about system requirements and how to prepare to submit your one application. But there are some eligibility questions coming through for T1 applicants, and we can stop and maybe answer them, given that new businesses applying for the first time in EMDG in T1. And the question is, if I haven't applied before or haven't attended other webinars, have I missed out? No, you haven't. You can still apply provided you meet all eligibility requirements. So the guidelines is a good source for you to refer to, to read the, the requirements in our website. Um, all the sample application forms as well are published there for T1 to guide you through what do you need to, to meet in terms of requirements and what evidence you need to submit with your application form. Please also, you must um, demonstrate export readiness as we outlined before. <coughs> Um, <coughs> sorry, there's something about online sales in the WebEx chat. So if you, as a business, what I understand, have already exported online and incurred some export revenue through online sales, that makes you an exporter. So you're not new to export and you cannot apply in T1. So you may consider T2 or T3. Um, they're asking us, Mel, where can they find the export readiness test? So the export readiness test can be accessed through two ways. Um, you can jump onto Austray's Go Global Toolkit, or you can simply just go onto the EMDG online portal, and the link was provided on the WebEx chat, um, Pat's panel, um, and that will actually direct you into logging into the actual portal, and on the homepage of the EMDG portal, you can access the export readiness test. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also to, to um, just looking at some other questions. Can we still use an EMDG consultant to apply? That is your business decision, your commercial decision, whether you need someone to help you um, uh, prepare the application and submit. Um, Austria does not endorse any EMDG grant agents or any consultants. The quality incentive program is was a feature of the previous scheme. It's no longer in the current program but um, absolutely you can engage a third party to help you with the process. Um, we can now open for uh, Slido. Um, just got a note from my team, we have Slido questions. Thank you, Noma, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, some questions so far. In the video provided earlier, it advised to prepare all documents into one file, but the portal has it all separately. Can you please confirm which is the correct method to do this? So there's separate files for each um, eligibility criterion that's required to be uploaded. What the reference was in, in the um, actual video itself is say for example, um, you, you, know, you have two pages that are separate files for your balance sheet statement. Um, you can combine those into a single file to make it one PDF document um, for those two pages of balance sheets. So every eligibility criterion requires a single file to be uploaded, okay? Um, and also one, one thing to highlight with the upload of supporting documentation is that when you do label a file and have that uploaded into the application form, it needs to be unique, uniquely named. So the files can't be named the same. So for example, if you're uploading your profit and loss statements, okay, you need to upload your first profit and loss statement as your profit and loss statement 2022-23, for example, and then the second profit and loss statement as um, profit and loss statement 23-24. So each um, individual document that gets uploaded into the application form needs to be uniquely identified and must be a single file as well as it being a PDF document. And uh, also to add to that, the form will prompt them to do so in terms yes. of validations that you must submit, um, must upload because the application form will, will not um, correct. work so, if you don't do that. Correct. So if you don't um, actually upload all the relevant um, documents that are listed, particularly on the finalisation tab, you won't be able to submit. Um, it will come up with an error message to say that the document's missing. Yeah. And it's important that you actually spend time 
uh, looking at, at that, uh, not rushing through application form and, and, and uploading quickly so you can actually submit, because if you do so, your application will be uh, deemed uh, incomplete and we cannot accept it for assessment. So it, it makes sense for you to be ready, label all uh, relevant attachments for each criterion and upload them as application form prompts you to do so. Wonderful. Thank you, Mel and Nirma. Uh, next question. Uh, in the video demonstration, it says you can't go over double the grant amount. We were shown $70,000 as marketing expenses. Isn't this double the grant amount? Can you please clarify? Yep. So that was intentionally put in there so the error messages um, get um, shown on the actual application form. Okay, so if you were to submit that amount on the actual application form, you will be given an error message to say that you can't have $70,000 in eligible expenditure and you can't receive a grant of $35,000. So what you'll need to do is then go and revisit those um, figures that you've popped into the eligible expenditure table and make sure that they fit within those parameters of double the expenditure amount um, of the grant amount sought that you're seeking. Thank you, Mel. Uh, no, Mel, we did cover this earlier, but we obviously just need to clarify a little bit more around eligibility for T1 and how we actually define if you've previously exported before or not. Um, so how do we define export sales? Is it simply any sales overseas, even if you haven't promoted your market overseas? That is right, because you already exported to some uh, channel um, and you are an exporter. So it's you, this is purely for new to export businesses who are trying to start that export journey um, and they never exported before. So if you have an export sales invoice through online or a passive sale or um, anything like that, that has made you an exporter. So you cannot apply in T1. Also, if you applied in EMDG current rounds in, in T1 and you want to apply again in T1, you cannot do that because you already have received two years uh, potentially of, um, of that grant. Um, also, there is a limit on the, on the number of years uh, for T1 from round four. You can only ac access T1 for up to two years uh, under the eight-year rule. Thank you, Nirma. Uh, Melissa, one for you. I have completed my export readiness test. Will this automatically be populated in my application? It surely will be. As long as it's the same ABN that you use to log in to complete that export readiness test and it's this, um, that ABN that you'll be applying for your export market development grant for, that question will be pre-filled for you and um, that record currently um, exists in our um, database. Yes, so it remembers you and you don't need to do anything else as long as you complete it to the UNVG online portal. Thank you very much. Um, a question around uh, the grant, uh, the period of activity that it covers. Uh, does the grant cover activity only from July 2025? That is correct. So round four is for export promotion activities uh, from 20. Uh, 526 and 2627. So for those two years. So if you incurring expenditure now in 2425, that is not eligible for round four. Thank you. Um, a question, just trying to seek a little bit more uh, clarity around uh, the need for the bank statements. Can we just cover again that requirement in terms of what we need to, what applicants will need to provide in terms of bank statements? So Melissa has taken us through the mandatory attachments. So bank statements to substantiate the capacity, minimum capacity to spend uh, 20,000 um, is a requirement uh, in the guidelines. So you to demonstrate that you need to submit your bank statement for 24 financial um, calendar year. So that could be in any month, the most recent bank statement that you receive from your bank. And also a transaction history from November before you apply. So two documents from your bank, one official bank statement from any of the months, the most recent one, and from November, the transaction history. Thank you, Nirma. Um, back on a question about the export test. Um, if an applicant submits the test, but then asks for a consultant to submit 
the application on their behalf, will this automatic certificate show on their portal or do I need to send this to them? So what will happen is with the agent um, populating the application form with their client's ABN, that will actually pick up those details from our database and mark it off to show that that applicant's ABN has completed the export readiness test. Thank you, Mel. I note that in the non-eligible items are expenses to solicit sponsorship for an event. Can you please clarify what does this mean? So that's, that's an eligibility requirement for ineligible expenses. So using the EMDG grant to sponsor an event is not eligible. Thank you, Emma. Uh, will this presentation be available after this webinar? Yes, we have recorded or are recording this session and it will be uh, published on Austria's website as soon as we can after this. So all of the webinars that we are running will be published um, on the website. We also have published already um, the, the video of the online portal that Melissa has uh, demonstrated uh, that's already available on our YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, how is the authorization to an external consultant given? Is this through RAM as well? Yes, it is in some sense. Um, it's also something that you need to work with your client um, in making sure that that's available and so forth. And if you're an agent, you also need to make sure that you have an agent code that's been provided to you by Austrade from our EMDG help team. Um, to be able to go in and submit an application on behalf of your client um, through the portal using that agent code. So we highly recommend that if you are a new agent to the program, that you make sure that your agent code is ready to go um, and you've got that available in our system. Yes. Um, also, the agent will provide their details and the ABN applicant details, so we'll see both. Mm -hmm. um, also to note that we are entering, if you are successful to receive the grant offer, the grant offer is to the actual applicant business and we're entering into a grant agreement with that business, not with the grant agent. So even though you are um, being helped by the grant agent to submit the, the form, mm -hmm. the contract will be with, with you as the primary contact of that business. Sorry, I'm uh, Chong here, and while I'm one of the panelists here, um, just like to maybe answer two quick questions uh, in there, if yes. it's okay. Of course. Uh, the first one that I saw was actually uh, in relation to a question on the yearly limits on the number of grants received, uh, whether they're attributable to specific tier. Um, I guess that question actually from Cape Brown at 2.12 p.m. And my response to that is actually, yes, um, if there's no grant specifically attributable to any tier uh, under which a grant agreement has been signed for, um, and then the, um, the grants, well, primarily, you know, these grants you, you were talking about would be actually the grants you received or a grant you received prior to the commence commencement of the EMVG Legislation Amendment Act 2020, uh, which means that, you know, received in the re reimbursement era of this program. And then those grants will be attributable to the yearly limit, which means a year limit only. So they don't attributable to any tier space limit at all. So if that's the sort of uh, the standing from the legislation perspective. And then there's another question about, um, like someone like to uh, clarify regarding the evidence of the products or services being substantially Australian origin. And how, how do they sort of provide this evidence? Um, before I provide my res response to that, I just want to clarify with um, Mel that, is, that the um, application form, from the application form perspective, depends on what the applicant is applying for uh, in relation to an eligible product. So the relevant uh, props will be given to the applicant at the time. For example, if the um, AB can supply for um, an 
this or a tax number required for that wine. Or if the goods actually are made overseas, and then there will be uh, relevant requirements. For example, you have to submit uh, goods not in Australia submission as well. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, is that correct? Mel, yes, still? Yeah, that's correct. So yeah. depending on how the applicant answers the questions, yeah. um, it will prompt them as to whether or not um, they need to provide those submissions. Um, so if they are making goods um, outside of Australia, they'll be requested to upload um, the goods made outside of Australia submission and the template, as we mentioned before, is available on our website. Similar with the um, services other than tourism services um, template as well. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I guess actually that's the way how you sort of prepare yeah. the application for providing the relevant evidence to satisfy the, the respective eligible products you plan for. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jewel. Um, we might just have time for one last question, uh, Nurma and Mel. Uh, when will we be notified if we have been successful in the grant and when would the funds be allocated to us? Thank you for that question. Um, so we are opening on the 12th of November and we will be assessing applications in the order they received. Applicants that are not eligible will be notified straight away. You can also log on to the EMDG online portal to see the status of your application. Um, if you are eligible and if you, um, you're successful to be offered a grant agreement, we'll start doing that um, at probably from end of January. The reason for that is uh, we're acknowledging the Christmas shutdown periods and the holidays, and we do not want to issue grant agreements over that period because you only have 21 days to review your grant agreement and accept. So you should expect to receive the outcome if you are eligible and successful from end of January. And then they will be coming through uh, February as well for you to review and accept. Once you do that, we will execute on our end and that constitutes a contract between you and the Commonwealth. Then from July 25, we will start making initial payments of minimum of 20,000 to low risk applicants. Uh, you will then ask to submit milestone reports throughout the year when you're ready to do so. And then we will assess that and make that second payment for that year. And then also ask you to provide evidence with that milestone report. Um, and, and that will be published on, on our website very shortly for you to see what the reporting obligations will be. So. That is kind of a quick timeline for you, what to expect once you submit. Wonderful. Thank you, Emma. Um, would you like to take one? Yeah, we can one more and then we can um, throw to close. Um, tier one requires companies to not have exported before, but tier two requires a minimum turnover of 500,000 CAD. What about those companies that are currently exporting, but not yet? At 500,000 for turnover mark. So, yes, uh, round four introduces um, uh, turnover thresholds. So T1, that's 100,000. That's a key eligibility criterion. So, if you're below that, you cannot apply in T1. T2 is half a million. So, any anyone who is between that or under half a million, you cannot apply in T2. Again, all the eligibility requirements are in the grant guidelines. If you do have further questions, you can write to us at um, emdg.help at australia.au. We'll try to answer your inquiries as soon as we can. We are dealing with high volume of inquiries in our teams, uh, which we have expanded. A large team is uh, handling those. We also will be extending the opening hours of the uh, EMDG helpline uh, uh, from 6th of November, when we open to representative bodies and then later to uh, other teas from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Australian Easter Daylight Saving Time. So you will be supported in that uh, application period as well. Uh, please subscribe to our, to our newsletters um, as well, because that's the main channel how we communicate any updates. And as Melissa was saying, once we open, uh, we will be updating the, the portal regularly in terms of uh, the allocation of grants and that demand in each tier. We'll keep each tier open until the funding is exhausted. So, uh, and you will see regular updates for that um, uh, on the online portal. Please also refer to the numerous videos that we have published to uh, help you prepare to apply uh, on our Austrade YouTube channel. And we wish you all the best with preparing to apply. And please let us know if you've got any further inquiries to EMDG Health. Thank you.